Welcome back to the Purple Swordfish Show. I am Alex, aka Purple Swordfish, and today we're playing some Madden Ultimate Team on Madden NFL 15 for the Xbox One. We just did the Ultimate Reggie White Challenge, and now we're going to take on the Ultimate Larry Allen Challenge. So I was really stoked to see these two. I said that in the last video, and I'll say it again. These two are guys that I watched playing in the 90s and even the 80s, and they were both dominant at their positions. Absolutely 100% first ballot Hall of Famers in my mind. So very well deserved that these two guys would be part of the ultimate team. And I'm really hoping that I can pick one of these guys up at some point in time. Now, right now, I did this. I do this in every Ultimate Legend video, and I'm probably going to keep doing it. So first off, my team is the same as my last video. The only real new addition has been the tight end right there you see him Antonio Gates the final edition so that's been the most recent edition other than that I've been saving my coins and I'm trying to make a decision I talked about this at length in my last video I won't go through it again but I'm trying to make a decision between three or four different player cards and I'm getting pretty close to pulling the trigger on a couple but nevertheless let's go ahead and see right now this is the first 24 hours that these cards have been live so let's see what the worst case scenario is because I can tell you right guys right now this is the worst case scenario as far as how much you guys would pay to put one of these together for yourself. So 219000 for one card and then we'll go right over here and we would spend another 339 So let's just go ahead and round it up and say you'd spend 550 k so far. And this is another 400 so 953 k and oh man that's that is absolutely the worst case scenario so we will be looking at 1.4k or 1.4 million rather i'm sorry not, not 1.4k i really wish and then you're going to spend another probably 200 about another 180,000 on elite badges here so it, it's pretty rough right now you'd probably spend around 1.6 million putting together your own larry allen unless you pull some of those impacts so, you know, like I told you guys in the last video, if you look at these legends, it's pretty interesting. You'll notice that the current players or the really, really popular players, let me see if I can pull it up here, right? They're through the roof in terms of price. But then if you go to something like here, Ultimate Webster, right? Mike Webster, all time great, no doubt about it. But let's take a look, like how much are you going to spend to put one of these together, right? So let's just price it out right now, 7800 Let's just go ahead and call that 25000 Let's add another 16000 so now we're at 41000 And this nickname one, I've been watching this one, I mean as low as 4000 so you know not too expensive you're gonna spend more on the elite badges than anything else guys so you can absolutely put one of these together and I'm thinking about putting some of these together just because he's not a really popular player now that would give you a 99 overall center so when that card first came out it was a fortune to go ahead and put it together but as time has gone on it's become more affordable so don't go into these challenges thinking you'll never get these cards. The market value might dip a little bit. Now that Reggie White, that one might be a little bit high up there. But the Larry Allen, because people just generally don't give offensive line their due credit. And that goes for everything. Like They don't get credit on NFL TV. They don't get credit in this video game. They don't get credit from the common American that watches football. But I've said it many times on this show, and I'll say it again. Your offensive line... It really is a huge part of your success or failure in Madden Ultimate Team. And it's just it just goes to show, you know, a lot of you guys can definitely go out there and improve your Madden Ultimate Team by looking at the trenches, looking at your D-line, your O-line. So right now what I'm trying to do is upgrade my D-line, and then after that I'm probably going to focus right back on the O-line and try to upgrade that one even more. Anyways... How do you get these legends? How do you get yourself on a track where you can 
get those legends, you want to go ahead and play the challenges. So we're going to go ahead and take this one on. Five minute quarters, all pro difficulty. Shouldn't be too hard to handle. And as I said in the last video, the five minute quarter thing, I really didn't let it discourage me too much. I hate to make a video like my general rule of thumb is don't make a video over 30 minutes long. I really hate to do those. They do very poorly. The minute you go over 30 minutes, videos just don't do well on YouTube from my experience, unless it's like something that's special and different, like it's a one-off type video. So I try to keep my videos down in length, and you guys know that, and I also try to keep my Madden Ultimate Team solo challenges down in length just because, well, I want to go back to grinding and getting money. So I was able to do the one for Reggie White pretty quickly. We got through that really easily. As always, our main objective here is going to be running the football and chewing a lot of clock. That breakaway run doesn't really help me out too much in that regard, but I don't know. I was just having fun, so just keep going with it. And Alfred Morris will kind of dink and dunk his way probably down to the goal line here. Hopefully we'll get a touchdown. It's all pro difficulty, and I haven't had too much trouble with those challenges lately, but every once in a while, you run into that one team on all pro that kind of throws you for the loop. The other day, I was playing the... God, who was I playing? I think I was playing the Eagles, and it was kind of a coincidence of sorts because I was talking to somebody in my Madden Ultimate Team Gauntlet video, the comment section for it, and he was saying he was having a hard time with the Eagles on All-Pro. And then I played him again on All-Pro difficulty. And I had a hell of a time beating him. And it came right down to the last play. I managed to get a touchdown on a bomb. Like it was a Hail Mary, a legit Hail Mary. I think I called Hail Mary trios. And I bombed it. Alshon Jeffrey caught it in the end zone in a pack of people. I mean, it couldn't be any more of a fluke ending. To a game and won the game that way so as I said those all pro challenges they can get away from you sometimes got to be careful it also didn't help that in that game I made a couple turnovers and I let Shady McCoy run all over me it's gonna be really interesting facing that Eagles team in Madden next year because I'm used to them being somebody to watch on offense because they had so many weapons and this upcoming year I'm not really sure what to expect they got rid of McCoy and they got rid of Macklin well they didn't really get rid of him they didn't re-sign him and then they brought in DeMarco Murray and Ryan Matthews and they traded Foles for Sam Bradford it's just a really odd team overall and I think it's one of those make or break type things because I could see it going really well you know maybe Sam Bradford breaks you know breaks all expectations exceeds all expectations rather and comes back better than ever stays healthy I think that's the most important thing for Sam Bradford is just staying healthy and works out perfectly in that system because I think their off offensive system is a very strong one I think it has a lot of advantages and I think that it's one that just about any QB would like to play in that being said it will be interesting to see. I have some questions about their wide receiving core. I don't know if they're going to shore that up in the draft, but it might be a little bit hard to see you know, guys like Riley Cooper as a legit first or second option as a wide receiver. I don't know how I feel about that one. And, you know, they got, I think his name's Jordan Matthews. I could be wrong on that one. But they have one, uh, he was a rookie last year, and he did really well in a couple games. So some people are saying, you know, that guy will be able to fill Macklin's role. And, you know, let's not forget, there were people that said they were crazy to get rid of this guy who's returning this punt right now, Deshaun Jackson. It just goes to show in the NFL, sometimes it comes down more to a system than it does to players. You know, New England's a really good example of that. How many guys have gone into New England done really well, weren't really highly acclaimed, 
whether when they got drafted or they weren't highly acclaimed from other teams that they may have come from. And then they go to New England and they do really well. And then when they leave New England, you know, it all kind of falls apart for them. Dion Branch is a perfect example of that, right? Dion Branch had his best years in New England, goes to Seattle, doesn't work out in a new system. Happens all the time. So sometimes system really does have more of a meaning or more of a relevance than the personnel. And I guess Chip Kelly is rolling the dice and thinking that, that his system, which is a really interesting one, by the way. If you guys haven't done research on it, I would highly recommend you do because it's so, so intriguing. The things that he does differently than other NFL coaches and practices, you know, just day-to-day -day things that Chip Kelly does with that team. They're very interesting. They're very different. And he's got scientific research that he says backs it up. And, I mean, it, it, it has shown, you know, that it's already paid some dividends. But it's really fascinating stuff. I, I really applaud him for coming into the NFL, which kind of has that stigma of, you know, being that, you know, our way or the highway type league. And... A lot of people get really caught up in, you know, the old way is the only way with the NFL. And he came in there with a totally unique system and kind of, you know, didn't buy into the whole stigma that surrounds the NFL of, well, you got to do it this way because everybody else has. That being said, I'm not a real big Eagles fan because they had that rivalry with the Bucks. In the early 2000s, where they, what they do? They beat the Bucks like three times in a row in the playoffs before the Bucks finally got that eked out that win in the NFC Championship game in 02 and won the Super Bowl that year. And I'll never forget that game, man. I was on the edge of my recliner. I had a Lazy Boy recliner at that time in my life. I was sitting on the edge of that thing. Just total nervous wreck. And then every year since then, the Bucks have been pretty terrible. But you know what? You got the number one pick in the NFL draft if you're a Tampa Bay Bucks. So the future is hopefully bright. <laughs> And despite a really awful year, the Bucks had a lot of bright spots individually. I think Mike Evans is going to be a legit baller in the league. And I think that, you know, Glennon might still be able to give them something. Even if they draft a quarterback this year, I think that Glennon might be able to give them something in the interim before that guy takes over. And, you know, Gerald McCoy is Gerald McCoy. He's one of the better defensive tackles in the game. So there's a little bit to be excited about here. And I'm going to go ahead and, you know, this is usually a show where we go kind of unconventional. But I'm going to go ahead and take the field goal here. And the reason I'm going to take the field goal is if I can get one touchdown in the second half. I'm up by 17, and I don't have to worry about them calling timeouts. So that might save me a little bit of time here. Go ahead, kick it off. And just try to limit this to... Okay, there we go. That's exactly what I was looking for. You don't want to let them get up too far, because then they start passing and calling timeouts. And that's annoying because I just want to go into the half here. Hopefully they'll do what they usually do when they're in this poor field goal, uh, I'm sorry, poor field goal position. Field goal position, what am I talking about? Okay, sorry guys. I guess this four loco that I've had one sip of has already gotten to me, but when you're in really poor field position, like these guys are, they usually run it once and then, yeah, this is what they're doing. So it took me 20 seconds to get that sentence out, but I did, and it happened. All right, let's go ahead, kick it off. I don't think that was a very good kick. That's 
probably going to... Oh, no, look at that. Okay, maybe the wind helped us out there. And no return this time as he takes a knee. All right. Trying to either get a quick stop or get a turnover here. And I want to get... So I'm not going to burn 10 minutes o'clock, no matter how deep I am in my own territory. It's just not going to happen. So I'm going to try and get the ball back and burn as much clock as possible while getting a touchdown because that will make the fourth quarter a lot easier for us. And hope it, hopefully it will get us out of this challenge a little bit quicker. Oh, man, I just totally whiffed on that one. Elias Campbell was right there. Totally could have had the tackle, and I blew it. Yeah, that was that was a pretty dangerous run because we all know Demarco Murray has absolute jets and can he can burn you in that open field like that. All right, Elias Campbell makes up for it, even though it wasn't his fault. It was my fault last time. Stay to a cover three. Digging this cover three. It's been working for me all game long thus far, so I'm just going to keep running with it. And Burnett almost got in there. Almost had a chance at an interception. But I'll gladly take the deflection instead. And let's try to get a sack or a turnover here. And you know what? I don't know. I don't know. That's... A little bit too much time. Maybe eight and a half minutes. I don't think I can burn eight and a half minutes. That'd be about 20 plays going down the... Yeah, that's not going to work. That's that's way too close to call. Nevertheless, going to try and take this one as deep in my own territory as possible. Fair catch it on the eight. I'm going to give us 92 yards to chew some clock here. Yeah, we could probably just get it pretty deep into the fourth quarter, barring some kind of a breakaway here or a turnover. You know, something unexpected. Man, Alfred Morris has a killer rushing average right now. 9.2 yards per rush. Can't say enough how great that card is. I'm really enjoying it still. Been a couple weeks and it hasn't lost any of its luster. You know how sometimes you get a card in Madden Ultimate Team and you're so excited, and then after you know a couple weeks, you're oh man, I'm kind of getting tired of this one. It doesn't happen to me very often, but I notice a lot of my friends on Xbox Live swap out cards like crazy, especially some of the people I talk to and follow on Instagram. Every time I look at their lineup, it's different. I'm trying to figure out how they do it. I think a lot of people do a lot of trades. I I don't think I've done a single trade this year. Outside of something like a wager game or what have you. I, yeah, I haven't done a single trade. All right. Take this one to the end of the third quarter right here. And being at the end of the third quarter deserves... A little bit of celebration, I think. So, let's take another sip of this four loco. Still hoping one day that some really bored guy at the four loco offices is watching YouTube, stumbles on one of my videos where I talk about four loco, and decides, you know what? Let's let's sponsor this guy. And by sponsor, I mean, let's just send him free product. I would gladly take that. I'll even put, like, a little graphic up in the middle of the video for you guys. All right, I would not recommend the product to anybody because drinking's bad and nobody should drink. I say that jokingly, but... I don't know. Sometimes I totally get why people quit, but I like to have one or two beers in the evening time. Or in the case of a four loco, when you drink one of those, it's like the same as 
five or six probably, but I haven't, let me try to do the math on that real quick. Let's see, it's like 12%, which is about double. So 12% is about double what your <clears throat> typical beer would have, right? Typical beer is like right around five and a half percent. Four Loco's 12. And then you're looking at 25 ounces, so that's a little bit over double your typical beer, which is 12 ounces. So you drink one of these Four Locos, you're basically drinking four beers at once. That's why you got to be careful. You got to pace yourself, and you have to kind of sip on it. And most importantly, absolutely most importantly, uh, not be near any kind of heavy machinery or drive on the four loco because that would be very irresponsible so never do that but if you're at home like I am right now and you're making YouTube videos or you're even grinding in Madden Ultimate Team you have nothing else to drink maybe you don't, you know want to relax a little bit but you don't want to pay premium beer prices four loco is there for you man and it tastes like fruit punch or whatever else you want it to taste like so they got like the fruit punch and they got the blueberry which is really good and I'm trying to think of all the other flavors like they have fruit punch blueberry lemonade orange grape I almost called the grape purple and the reason I almost called it purple is because it doesn't really taste like grape it just tastes like purple cough syrup out of all of them, I have to say my least favorite is the grape. The grape is just, it's too much, man. Funny story, I go to this one corner store and I go almost every day because I have a serious scratch off problem. And um, I like to buy like a couple dollars worth of scratch offs every once in a while. So between that and getting like, you know, Four Loco or something like that go to this corner store just about every day and I remember I got the grape one and the guy behind the counter he's like the nicest guy in the world he even talks to me about nerdy stuff like Batman and video games and what have you so he's the nicest guy and he just looks at me shakes his head and he, if you're gonna drink that it's that it's gross <laughs> so I said what do you mean and he says it's just it tastes like cough syrup and it's the grossest four loco out of all of them and I thought, oh, you know, maybe just had a bad experience with it. But I took it home, and, yeah, it's it's pretty bad, guys. Wouldn't recommend it. All the other flavors are really good, though. However, me saying that I don't like their grape flavor, that, right there, that probably disqualifies me from any kind of cross-promotional thing they would have done with me. All right, let's go ahead and run it one more time here. Can't believe I've ranted and raved about a made up four loco sponsorship. Alright, let's Okay. I was thinking let's run it one more time, but no more fun. Let's just go ahead, take the knee, and take this one in. Take it home. Well, I don't even have to take the knee. Oh man, look, oh Jason Jason Gare looks so angry. Dan Bailey, I think it was Dan Bailey next to him, just looks completely heartbroken. All right, so we'll do the old in out here, and we will. You know, it sounds really weird when I say we're gonna do the old in out, and I'm not actually doing it on the screen. So let's, let me show you guys, if you're new to the channel, what I mean by that. So I just did this challenge. It's not popping up with what I want, right? So you have to do the old in, and then you go out. So I call it the old in out, and it's kind of a reference to uh, Clockwork Orange, if any of you guys have ever read that book, seen the movie. Really good book. Um, kind of good movie. I like the book a little bit better. All right, so there we go. 2,500 coins, obviously. And then we get the ultimate team right guard. And uh, unlike previously, you can't auction or trade these off. They're not auctionable or tradable. I didn't know that auctionable was a word, so I learned something today. And we'll just go ahead and add that to the set. I'm not interested in quick selling. Look at that. I sold something in an auction for 180 coins. So 
in the process of doing these two videos, I managed to move just a bit over 100,000 and I can start trying to make some decisions as to what to do with those coins, but I know I need to upgrade that D-line. It's just something that has to happen. So let's go back here. Let's frame up the video and we'll end it off. So that is the ultimate Larry Allen challenge and you guys can see it, you know, don't let the five minute quarter scare you. It's not going to take that much time, especially if you run the ball a lot. And, uh, you know, running the ball a lot, it's not really going to take too much more time than a typical solo challenge. So it is worth getting that 2,500 coins and definitely worth getting that item. And even though you have until April 18th, you, know, you don't want to miss out on that one because, you know, you might be able to get a Larry Allen since it is an O-line guy. I think the market value on that one's going to drop a little bit. Nevertheless, before I end off this video, I'm going to do what I always do. Mention my social networking links. You'll see those on the screen in the description of this video. And then also on the about section of my YouTube channel. If you follow me or add me on any of those, I will follow or add you back. It's just polite. And then in addition to that, if you could subscribe to the channel, if you haven't done that already, please do. Every single one of those really helps us out here at purpleswordfish.com. And then finally, just as I did in the last video, I want to give a big, big thank you to all of our current subscribers for all of the subscriptions, all the likes, all the comments, etc. throughout the last week. It's helped us out a lot, and this past week, as I said in the last video, has been by far our best week on the channel, period. So thank you very much for all your support. I really do mean that. We really appreciate it here, Ashley and myself, and I uh, can't thank you enough. So thanks for all the support. Go out there, guys. Get your Ultimate Larry Allen Challenge done. Hopefully it will put you on your way to make your Madden Ultimate team just that much better. We'll see you next time on the Purple Swordfish Show.